Hi, this is David Brevik, the creator of Diablo and It Lurks Below, and you're listening to Budget Arcade. Hello gamers and welcome to Budget Arcade, a free-to-play gaming podcast to help you navigate through the growing realm of free-to-play games. I'm Scott. I'm Jeff. I'm Cody. And I'm Elliot. And welcome to episode number 22. Just to recap, we play a free-to-play game for a week and then we review it. Cody, what is this week's game? We are going with Mobile PUBG. Uh, Obviously, we've... uh... Actually, no, we haven't done regular PUBG yet, have we? It's not free free because it's not free to play. Huh. Get it together, man. Wow. Whatever. Anyway, I thought it was. My bad. Anyway, we're doing mobile PUBG, and uh, it was released on February 9th, 2018. Um, I believe the other one was rated... Was it rated T or was it rated... Yeah, it had to have been rated T. It's probably rated M, though. Is it? I don't think they rate those kinds of games. But again, this this is the mobile version, Scott, so it doesn't have the ESRB on it. Um, just wanted to clarify. That. I would not let anyway. my son play this. Just to use that scale. Okay, Dave. This is not. Dave, Teddy's although in a couple his... years I probably would, you know. But right now, no. If you're a good parent, you won't, because this game sucks. <laughs> Throwing your uh, hand out there early, aren't you? Hold it until the end, Elliot. No, uh, sorry. Playing the role of Jeff this week. It's me, Elliot. Hey, did you? I knew I you played... sounded better. No, I actually played it <laughs> begrudgingly. All right, so yeah, that's uh, it is a battle royale game uh, played on your Android devices, iOS devices, and uh, with that, let's get into the gameplay. Gameplay. If you haven't played a battle royale before, go back and listen to the other battle royales we've already reviewed: Apex Legends, that other one I didn't like. Um, anyway. <laughs> So this is a trimmed down version of PUBG. However, it's not trimmed down by much as far as what is in the game. I don't, the only map I ended up playing was the original PUBG map, but I think you can download the additional ones and download all the, all of them without any uh, charge. Okay. I would, I wouldn't do it. It's not worth it. So the first one's the best one. Yeah, I agree. The first one is the best one from what I've seen. Um, but the gameplay is as follows. 100 people get into an airplane. Well, people in quotations. That's a really strong word. Okay, there we go. Yep. There we go. All right, so. We're good. Continue. 100 entities get into an airplane. Oh, much better. And they drop onto an island and uh, a circle that in this case is just like a blue ring of death closes um, in different stages until everybody but one person is dead and the lone survivor wins. It's a first person shooter or third person shooter, uh, depending on your choice. And uh, you go around, you Sometimes loot both. stuff, you find attachments for your weapons. And then from there, it's it's like a more clunky Call of Duty. Uh, let's not take it that far. That's No, I agree with that. Uh, well, really? I don't really. It's not that clunky. Right, well. I uh, compared Ooh, man, it's pretty compared bad. to any other. Yeah, yeah. it's clunky as heck. Com- man. Yeah, it, like on PC, I think even then, like it's clunky. The interface, man, it, I it enjoyed this game nice. on PC. I played this game, the PC version of this game. I played that for a long time when it first came out. I really enjoyed it. This is not that game at all. Yeah. So yeah, the big thing about this is. I, when I, PUBG first came out and I was playing on Xbox, there was a certain level of tension, you know, because every there was gunfire going off left and right. And the sound design in, on the original game and on this is really great. 
where you turn your head and you can hear where the gunfire is coming from and you can hear it way off in the distance and you can hear it up close and you can hear cars driving by. When I first played the game, I hid in the bathroom in terror and there's none of that in this in game. In your house or in the game? Ba- yes. Bathroom strike. Both. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So yeah, that's, I can see it. Can, can, can we can we do a little segue and talk about that? That was the funniest thing I've ever experienced with Jeff. He had no idea what he was doing. I was trying to coach in the him bathroom. The way. Yes. Yeah. He wow. He's hands. like, we all right, like wrap it years, around your hand and go front to back, <laughs> not back to front. Wrapping Good. around. Is this what we're going to talk about? Because this we can talk about this anyway. No. Anyway, hold on. Uh, Here's a real Jeff question. Had, uh, yes. Real bathroom talk. Do you clump the toilet paper or do you fold the toilet paper? I fold. Clump the fold. toilet paper. Okay, good. Clumping is savage. Uh, you I don't know what you really think. Savage? It's Cody is a, is a anyway. bear of a man. Oh, yes, that's it, true. It, it, okay. It's so, fine for Cody. I would expect it. He's a clumper. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a anyway, podcast uh, that I this... heard where the guy actually would... It's going to start with the interrupting already. I can already... Yeah. No, you interrupt more than anyone, Cody, so just just calm down, bro. Just calm down. No, <laughs> I, fi- I hear somebody talking, and I politely shut up. Since mm, when? I don't know you, if you know the word politely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, Cody. No, no, let's, 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 let, let's let uh, Scott have his time in the oh, show. What, okay, what about go ahead, this Scott. other podcast, huh? Nope, nobody cared, so let's go. No, back on. to poop talk. I want to go back to poop talk. Uh. Anyway, the original story, Jeff literally held himself, he found the smallest shack he could, armed with a shotgun and nothing else. The circle kept closing on him. I died early, and uh, he literally, I, I literally had to watch him sit in that bathroom for, what, probably a good 15 minutes? Just The whole game. Watching the door. Like, just watching the door, and finally, didn't you come in second or third? Second, and the it circle was, just kept helping me. It was crazy. It was so dumb. I didn't kill one fun. person. I got in second place. It was I, beautiful. I Those kept, are kind I kept of fun, him, though, to do. Well, I kept telling him, I'm like, Jeff, you got to leave the bathroom. Nah, man. I'm just bathroom strats. Yeah, bathroom strats. <laughs> I'm good. I'm, I, I ain't leaving the bathroom. So, going, and part of that story, and what makes that story fun, and even though I was hiding in the bathroom the whole game, why I was still having fun is because I was scared. I was scared that someone was going to find me and shoot me, and, and it was going to be over for me, and, and Battle Royales Again, thrive we're talking about real bathroom. on that tension. Yeah, very similar to my normal bathroom habits. So um, that tension is what makes the game so good. The problem with PUBG Mobile is it's filled with bots and not even smart bots. Some of the dumbest AI you've ever seen. You can stand still and they will shoot you and it does tiny bits of damage. Very little damage. And you have plenty Which of time helps. to set up your shot and shoot and you can always tell the bots because as soon as they first get shot they drop to the ground and you just aim down and shoot them i won every game i played yeah i did too i you're talking about the the bots being dumb literally my way to take care of them was i didn't even slow down i would just like get my uh crosshair somewhere near their like their body and just like tap shoot the, while running straight at them and they couldn't do anything about it. They don't aim. You might, you, you might lose a tenth of your health. It's ridiculous. I think I may have ran into one real actual person and the only reason I say this is because I shot them and they turned and ran as opposed to laid down on the <laughs> ground. So I was wondering if that might have been a real person. But yeah, it just... It, when you know you're going to win when you boot up a game of PUBG, it ruins the experience. The, the game, There's so much downtime... In battle royales, specifically PUBG is kind of the this, most. Yeah, that yeah, you're right. while you're walking around, it's like man, it just really drives home the boredom because when you're walking around and you're worried about someone seeing you, it drives that tension up and makes the game a lot more fun. But when you don't care, when you're invincible, you're Superman in this world, it takes all the fun out of it. Yeah, this map might be the biggest map besides the H1Z1. That map was pretty big too. But PUBG in general, the map size is humongous. Well, and I will say so. The one thing I did like about the the not being scared part, I, I guess I, I get what you're saying, and I agree with you that it does take a lot of the fun out of the game when you don't have to worry about anything. The one positive thing is, is even if you ran into another player, unless they are god tier on this phone, it's kind of hard because so in the regular game. If you get if someone gets a sniper rifle and starts shooting at you, 
if they're far enough away, you can't find them. It's extremely yeah. hard unless you've played this a lot. You don't have to worry about that in this because uh, I've actually tried sniping. It's pretty difficult. Um, so let's talk no, about right. the that controls. Game, that's one good thing. Yeah, I will say the controls are really impressive for what this game offers. I agree, and I think in yeah. to almost counter Cody's point, I found the aiming to be a little easier than aiming on console. Definitely not easy. Be, easier than pc really? but on console you kind of have to be finicky you can be very precise and turn a lot quicker on a touch screen the only problem that i had with the controls that consistently popped up is i would randomly fire my gun like yes i had that yeah. problem all the time yeah, i've had that happen too so what are you talking about? You have to be more finicky, Jeff. I'm just trying to well, understand that. Well, so the PUBG that so I again I almost always play on console. So PUBG on console doesn't have auto aim or aim assist, so it doesn't help you even a little bit. And so you have to kind of if if your sensitivity is up high or low, it takes a little bit more effort to get your reticle exactly where you want it. Whereas on a touch screen or a mouse, it's actually quite intuitive because you can move your thumb just the right place you want it to be and i found now walking around was more difficult but putting my reticle on the enemy in this game i found to be very easy and actually added to the fun like i wouldn't mind seeing like a really great rail shooter like if they did panzer dragoon yeah. on mobile where your left oh thumb God, like yes. you pick one side to shoot and then your other thumb to move your reticle i i think that would be a great experience but that this the one thing this game really has correct is the controls and it runs yep. really great. Like I didn't have any hiccups or stutters. Uh, I didn't have a single problem either. Yeah. I got a couple stutters here and there, but it wasn't too bad. Now I will say one of the things I was very interested in. So again, we played a lot of uh, PUBG when it first came out on console. Uh, when I heard they were releasing this on mobile, I was like, I, I wanted to get it, but I was really worried. I was like, you know what, I, I, how are you going to do the looting system? Because that is such a crucial mm -hmm. part of the game. How are you going to do that with such a limited amount of space? They did it surprisingly well. As soon as you come up on something, there's a little there's a little box that will pop up, and it will show you exactly what it is. You can pick it up, do whatever you need to with it if you don't want it. Or if it's like, if it's like a box, uh, you can just click X, run away from it once you're done looting it, and you never have to worry about it again. It was very well done. I really that, and it also has the auto pickup feature where items yeah, like that was uh, really nice. the energy drinks or the um, any of the healing items, if you go the into, ammo. like, say, a box, yeah, or ammo that you're already using, if you go into a box, it automatically picks that up for you. I don't remember, did that have that in the original PUBG on PC nope. and Xbox? No, no, not on the PC. I wish they would adopt it. Like, I wish... Yeah all games would adopt like an auto loot and then i can manually go and fix what i want but the the thing i liked is i'd be running with my gun i'd have a, a m16 and i'd find a a definitively better m4 uh m4 so i'd pick up the m4 and it would take all my attachments off it would load the new ones yep. on the gun it would swap yes. out ammo if i needed to and it would do it in a matter of seconds and i was running on it, it made all the tedium it took all the tedium out and it had to do that just to be on mobile to be playable, but it was something that I wish they would add to the other platforms just because it takes so much of that thinking time out and it just does the work for you. Well, I, I wonder if they do that on the on the actual consoles and PCs because, <laughs> you know, it's supposed to be a more realistic shooter. I, I wonder if that's why they don't adopt that on the consoles. Well, I, and I don't know why, but I, I really appreciated having it. Uh, just, uh, just a thought. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it feels more intuitive like the Apex Legends loot system, you know, whenever you switch out your weapon and it automatically switches all those, you know, attachments and everything. It was a really yeah, nice feature. Everything you can use from your previous weapon, you can just throw on the new one and it's it's great. Yeah, anything else about the controls? Because they were done very well. The the graphics weren't terrible either. Yeah, no. I think the graphics for a phone game looked pretty great when you're flying over the island. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't have any problem there. And the nice thing about the graphics on this, so in PC and Xbox, the like what Cody was saying, if somebody's sniping you from way far away, you can't find them. 
on this one, you, so whenever the game originally came out, I was downloaded it right right at the start. And that was when there was actually players in the game playing as well. And even those players that were sniping you or shooting you from a far distance, you could actually find them a lot easier in this game because of like the foliage and stuff is a little bit uh, downsized on the graphics just so it's able to be played on the phone well. And it makes it a lot easier to pinpoint where you're getting shot from as well. So you talking about the downsized graphics, it's actually really big. Cause, so, and Jeff will probably remember this. Do you remember Plato Houses, Jeff? Yes. So it so there's so much stuff on the PUBG map. Uh, sometimes, I don't know if it happens as much on PC, but definitely on Xbox. When you land the buildings don't render in they just look like mush and yes. you can actually yeah. get like yes. stuck inside <laughs> the walls you can get stuck inside of furniture and then you're just dead uh it's really annoying but since they they reduced the graphics so much on this i had i have never once run into a play to what we like to call the play-doh house uh and that is fantastic that's true i haven't when run you, into when, it. when you like the interior is all that, rendered in awful and so i agree <laughs> Well, I know on the PC, the strategy, at least for a while, was to ha- set your graphics lower so that you could see people hiding in bushes better. Yep. Because there would be less foil, you know, foliage. So. All right. Anything else on gameplay? Because I think, I we think we're good. I think we covered it pretty everything. well. Scott? I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, let's uh, besides, see. like, talking about the different guns and stuff. Which... Uh, Shoot, I think we covered down it pretty well. Yeah, yeah, shooting down sides is pretty well is pretty well rounded. All you got to do is you click on the little button that indicates the uh, sight. I almost never aim down sights. I, now, I part did of it that, once. Yeah, I shot Sorry. from the hip almost completely, yeah. and mostly because I wasn't scared and I didn't need to be that precise. But it also part of I found it so intuitive to aim my sights, hit that, or even start by aiming by having an automatic weapon tap the button to start firing and then move my sights while i'm holding the button down uh so i never really even aimed down sights like at all hey wall this game is a pay to bedazzle pretty much all the microtransactions all they do is get you oh there's loot boxes there's a battle pass supply drops there's a battle pass there's actually Wait. two battle passes. There's the oh, regular yeah, there's battle pass, <clears throat> and then the ultra battle pass. So. <laughs> so when you guys picked up the game, did you all fly in naked? Because you had nothing? Of course. Yeah. No, because I've been playing it since it came out originally. Uh, okay. um, I stopped playing for about I... six months, but <laughs> my character was pretty well uh, unnaked. I, I, I flew in naked, except for I did find a pair of blue sneakers, and, or blue chucks, and I wore those in. Pretty fantastic. Yeah, I'd always dress off my first kill. Same. I, I put the oh, clothes no, I on. I just, I, just ran, I just ran naked with shoes. It was great. Yeah, but what did you do in the game? <laughs> I'm glad uh, you made that joke, because uh, I was about to. I see to. what you did there. I see what you did there. Well played, I was going to go well with, played. or as Cody calls it, getting up for work. Yeah. Uh, I can't imagine putting money in this game that feels like it's dead. Oh, God, no. Uh, there's nobody to play against. Like, in the, uh, That's almost going into the review part of it, but I can't imagine putting one cent into this. Hell, the battle pass is ten dollars. The ultra battle pass, you can't even buy the specific amount of like in game currency. You have to buy two different currencies. So the battle pass the ultra battle pass is like fifteen dollars. So oh, I'm not gonna lie, we... I never looked at the battle pass. What do you mean you have to buy two different currencies? Well, so they have the in game currency, right? That you buy with yeah. your own money. So it's to like buy 10, the, the ten in game yeah. currencies. The one battle pass is 600 coins or whatever, and you can buy that for $10. You can get 600 coins for $10. The second battle pass, though, is like 1,500 coins, and you can't buy just 1,500 coins. You have to buy like a 600 or two 600s or like a 1,000 and like a, a 300. You know, you have to buy. Like, oh, two. that's. I thought you meant like it was so, actually like, two different currencies. I was like, oh, what no, no. no so to like actually get it, you have to spend <laughs> even more. Like, so you're getting taken advantage of on that front. That's the old Microsoft points method. Yeah. <laughs> like,. Yeah, please, yeah, that's exactly it. Please don't support those sort of antics. Like, Ugh. I mean, the reason EA gets away with it with Apex is because people do it. And 
if yep, if, if you didn't say, it, hey, I want to buy, if you're selling a loot box for $5, I only want to have to buy $5. Well, how long did it take for Microsoft to get rid of that function? Because I hated buying Microsoft. Games. Near the end of the 360 life cycle. Was it that long? I thought yeah. they got rid of it like maybe a year before they got rid of it. Anyway, it's still near the end. It was a 10-year a ten year life cycle. but yeah. Well, heck, even Nintendo does it where they're like, you want to buy like 700 points or 1,200 points or the price of oh, the game. Yep. And you're like, uh, the price of the, the game, please? Yep. Here's yeah, my money. Take like, my money. Jeez. Why do you do this to me? I, I want to talk about because of the microtransactions in this game, their the UI on the main menu is absolutely atrocious. Oh, it's so confusing too. I got so turned around in that stupid thing two or three times and couldn't find the little X button. I agree. And like even just to figure out how to go to solos. So the first game I jumped in. Now I will say, uh, I jumped in my first game and it paired me with some randos. But we had voice chat and it worked really yeah. well. We yes, rocked does. the game because we played nothing but bots. But it's kind of cool that it has a rather seamless voice chat. Just kind of something we skipped over. Um, but I was like, I kind of just want to play solos. And it took a while to kind of thumb around and find the setting. And it has that sort of like feature, like this distracting amount of information on the first screen. I am so stupid. Yeah. I don't even think I bothered trying to set up solos because it was so confusing. I just was like, oh, I'll just play duos, whatever. Yeah. And, you know, so I think the vast majority of the community that it does still play the mobile version plays on duos and squads. And you actually get paired with somebody who's a real person instead of a bot, which is nice. But again, your all your opponents are bots. Maybe one or two is a real person, but very rarely. The games See, are I play nothing enough. but solos. Yeah. I, I played nothing but solos, and I, I mean, I ran into maybe, uh, maybe five people out of like six or seven games. Most of the people I would run into was on the plane because you could hear them like in the chat and then that was the only time i ever heard it from um another thing about the chat so if you're playing with somebody and they don't have chat there's voice commands within the game that you can like scream out to people like the game screams it basically like so if you got a guy in the car you can select your op the options that says get in the car or if you tag a certain area on the map, you can say, go that way. So they do have something like that, which was nice if you didn't want to bother to put on your voice chat. Yeah. Or you could just play solos like I did. You don't have to worry about talking to people. It's great. Or you could fully cover the game, Cody. Oh, like, I can't believe you, you just said that. I, I cannot know, right? believe that just came out of your voice. <laughs> Good. Okay, I'm glad the rest of us were like, Whoa. See, I, you know what? I would ex I would accept that coming from Elliot, but from you or Scott. It felt like one a lie. Didn't even it felt like a lie when I thing. said it. But <laughs> yeah, I think it left his mouth. He was just like, "Damn, I'm gonna get called out for this." Hey, I mean, you know, you know what? At least you own up to it. That's Support for Budget Arcade is brought to you by Manscaped. Who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming? Manscaped. Offers precision engineering tools for your family jewels. It's funny that you say that, Scott. Manscaped just launched in the UK, so any overseas listeners that might need to, I believe Mark would say, twigs and berries, they want to take care of that whole mess. I don't know the grooming stuff in the UK, but they might want to clean it up a bit, and Manscaped's the way to go. So, Jeff, if you don't mind, I'm going to cut you there. They're third-generation no, trimmer. So that's the thing. Manscaped, you don't cut. But what about the sloppy top on the rock? Well, you know, sometimes when you got to get around to the scrope boat, I'll say this. I'm a heavier guy, so it's a little hard to see the meat knockers. And when you're trimming, you kind of want to have a good visual. But with the Lawnmower 3.0, which is also available in the UK now, you can just kind of go at it and not worry too much about it. There's uh, an LED light on the front of the Lawnmower 3.0. That way you can kind of make sure everything looks nice and trim for your, your significant other. I'll tell you something. 
one, Jeff. You know that I am a uh, bicycle commuter, correct? I do know that, yes. And because of that, with the ball deodorant, it's so helpful, as well as the ball toner to use after I've ridden my uh, excessive amount of miles to work. And it's refreshing. Oh, yeah. Spritz in the skin twins right after your bicycle ride, it's magic. So, guys, so let me just say that the Lawnmower 3.0 is 7,000 RPMs with quiet stroke technology. That leaves Big Joe and the twins feeling great. They've supplied listeners of Budget Arcade with a promo code to save 20%. So that's 20% off. You get free shipping with the code ARCADE at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Make your testes your besties. And for our lady listeners, just like games are not for men only, neither does this product have to be. You can skip that pink tax by using our promo code ARCADE just to let them know that Budget Arcade sent you. That's cool. Replayability. There's three maps that you can pick from. You can uh, download all three of them for free. So there's that part of the replayability that you can do. Um, I do like kind of to, to, to add to that, that you can select to have more maps or not based on the storage on your phone. Like if you have a phone with not a ton of internal storage, you just download one map. Like and it lets you to choose the amount of game you want to download. I thought that was that was a nice addition. Yes, it was. Also, so like I was saying, with the UI being so overcrowded, so each item within the UI is like almost like a mini battle pass in in on itself. There's daily quests that you can do. There's a couple of weeklies, and I think there's monthlies. And each one of those, when you complete it, will give you another type of currency within the game that's used for cosmetics that you can create basically so as far as replayability is concerned on that front there's quite a bit of it just so you can swag out your character even more without having to pay for anything so i i'm gonna say this game's fatal flaw the thing that kills it more than anything else is the bots it breaks the game it it takes it from being really cool and runs really well controls really well and it takes all these good things and just throws it out the window because there's no willing tension i'd be even willing to like wait longer in a queue to have real people absolutely and so and this is and i kind of now feel like i understand cheaters even less like people that cheat on games (laughs) Because playing this game, I felt unstoppable, and I'm sure that's what cheaters do, but it takes all the fun out of it. it it's so boring. So I, I will say, that I think the only re- So when I first played this game, when it first came out, uh, I think the first game I ran into nothing but bots, The but like the next couple games, I would easily run into two or three people a map, uh, like each match, and you know, there's a hundred people. That means there's a lot of people in the map. If I'm running into that many. Um, but I think since then, since the initial release, I think the player base has fallen off so much. There's no way to fill a queue. Um, you know, if you're, if not, you're going to end up waiting for 20 minutes to get into a right. game just to fill a game. So, but I, I wish they would have taken the route of Realm Royale where they put, you know, a couple of bots in and then way more players or even if they did half and half that would have been way better or just make the ai better yeah i I, the ai being better would help but it still wouldn't be as satisfying as as fighting real people i know if they made PUBG mobile with a very small map and 20 people dropping in it would be a much better game uh yeah they uh, did it's called fortnite well yeah but if if they took that lower island, you know, the main map has that small island and you just drop mm-hmm. everyone there and maybe do yeah. some houses and, and just have that be your mobile game. I could see it having a lot more traction. Yeah, I don't think they're actually going to affect the core gameplay of it because I think they, you know, they're they're dead set on, you know, this is this is exactly like PUBG on console or PC just in a, on mobile Check it out. I, yeah, I think dab. that's the only reason they didn't go that way. Flip yeah, a but water sh- bottle. Please, God, don't dab. And you're doing everything I hate about mobile games where you're shoehorning something in oh, absolutely. to a small package that doesn't belong there. So I would say trim the game down. Make it 
still accessible. And it's like uh, we were talking, Elliot, uh, uh, about Underlords, how I think all the games are 40, 50 minutes. I've been checking out all these different ones, and I found a game called, I think it's just called Hero Chess, and they have a mode for shorter sessions. You know, like, oh, I'll just... Hero Chess, I, bang, bang. No, that's uh, Magic Chess, bang, bang, which I've been playing now. It oh, doesn't, Mac, okay. It doesn't have that mode. How There's many of these are uh, Duty the well, decade. I'm just playing Magic Chess now. Magic well, we're going to have my an uh, intervention here real soon for you. I was about to say, we're, right we're going to have to have a discussion. It's so good. This is, you're Dear out Chad, of he's enjoying you're that, uh, the genre. I, I'm really enjoying it. It's a fresh <laughs> new game, yeah. and I'm having fun with it. But, um, you know, uh, they have the full mode there if you want it, but they also have a trimmer, smaller mode for nice, when actually. you're on the toilet. Man, you There's really into toilets, yeah. Can we call this episode Toilet Time with Jeff? No. New podcast idea, Jeff. I think we could do that. You we both have dietary issues, mine, right? And we'll just, yeah. Just, we'll, we'll just you know, podcast about... The toilet. Can I be on it? Color, consistency, frequency. Yeah, there's a whole chart for that. Yeah. Wow, so we've, uh, we've officially hit highbrow uh, talk on this podcast. Hey, uh, potty talk is golden. That's that's where all the money's at. Potty talk is golden. Another podcast name. Oh, dude, you gotta cut all of this. <laughs> yeah, just you don't guys put all it out in the issues. air. Hold on, people yeah, will copy gonna... it. Yeah, get this before it goes oh, out. Don't worry. Oh yeah, because everybody's going for the uh, for the toilet themed uh, names in their podcast. <laughs> it's just it's such a it's such a booming part of the podcast industry and you're gonna eat your words i would definitely have scott on as a guest because i know he has a killer story <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> thanks uh, a lot jeff what? can't wait to hear that off mic. i just said you had a story you're the editor anyway okay. man you can take it out oh i know all right judgment jeff what say you are, are we already? So we did. What are our categories? Yeah, oh, already? We okay. did everything. Yeah. I. So whether or not it gets my seal, it doesn't because it's it's with bots. It's a broken game. It's just broken. I, everything else about it works with the exception of the clutter on the main screen. But once you get past that, everything works. It works perfectly. This game should be great. But the fact that nobody plays it breaks the experience, and I can't recommend it. How about you, Elliot? Uh, it doesn't. Uh, I didn't like things like having to link my social media to it to play. Uh, I thought it was kind of a big file. Um, I thought the constant microtransaction bombardment was awful. Um, but I do, having said all of that, I think this is the almost the best version of this game you could make on a phone. I don't know how you would improve improve on it other than getting people to play. So I think they've done a good job, but it's just it's not fun at the same time. So no. Cody? Uh I gotta say no. The uh the same issues everybody else has. Controls, great. Graphics, pretty good for mobile. Um there's just not enough people playing it. And even if they would have like like Jeff said, I wish they would just like cut the player base in half. Say, all right, we're gonna drop fifty people in a smaller area or thirty people in a smaller area. It would be it would have been much better. Um, it it had so much potential and just it fell short. So I gotta I gotta say no. All right, um, yeah, it's gonna be a no for me as well. I, I'm just gonna mirror everything what you guys have been saying. Like, like I, the gameplay is superb, but it again, really like, is. I. I why can't we get more people playing this game? If we could get more people playing this game, this game would be so much fun. Yeah, or it surprisingly better. works on mobile. Like, it fulfills I, all their promises. I, I honestly, think just the whole PUBG player base has just died, honestly. I, it's getting very close. To it's an oversaturated cool. genre now. But. Yeah, I agree. I, I Honestly, I wish they would take, pull everything that's good about this version and stick it on Xbox and PC, and that would make the game so much more playable for me, because I wouldn't be getting my butt handed to me so badly in that game. That's that's I mean that's the main reason I quit playing PUBG is because I would just I couldn't play it. It's just like how we discussed in the Realm Royale episode. I would get 
just killed in all these other battle royale games whereas realm royale i actually felt like i had a chance to, to win a game and even if they made some other sort of single player part because everything else works like i would play a campaign a first person yeah, campaign I would on too. The, with these controls but yeah, you're absolutely right this is perfect for that oh that's oh that would it's be a nice. really big letdown. I, I mean, it's free, probably guys. the best game that we played that I can't recommend. I mean, yeah, I, I'm with you there too. All right, well, this uh, game is not budget arcade approved. Uh, I don't think we had any listener don't. commentary this week, did we? I would hope not. I hope I hope everybody stayed far, far away from this. this is well, I know Coconut Wizard said he was going to play, but I don't think he ever had a chance to. He was probably you, busy, like, feeding are, children in other nations. Oh, my God. He, here we go. Well, I heard I, he solved cancer last week, but he wasn't telling anybody. Well, Tony, that, just, he would not tell anyone. He would do it. Tony, I just want to say humble. one thing. Although, I bet if the reason... I don't care who reason, you choose, but I'm not the one sucking up all the time. I, I just want to point uh, that out. I think Cody, if he, if he did shows, discover you, and he yeah, wasn't see, that's sharing, how little you Cody cares. on Twitter... You weren't on Twitter, so you didn't see what uh, he put for all of us. Yeah, he but he, he basically comment. said that he. I was a little loves upset he did except he for didn't, you. I was upset he didn't fair. continue the Tr- Ninja Turtle like. I mean, can thing. you blame him? I was like, I mean, okay, which one am Jesus. I? Which one is? Well, Jeff? you know, the only Clearly reason I'm he Michelangelo. Didn't, didn't pick you, Cody, is because you're not on Twitter enough. Just point no, blank. I'm Raphael. Well, that's yeah, I, well, I that's go with not that. going to happen. Cody's Venus, the girl turtle that they introduced in the really horrible live action oh, TV okay. show. Now, that's, <laughs> now you have just crossed the line. That is just an. Why are, is that crossing man. the line? She was a ninja. Because that you're not a ninja. That's, the whole that's an upgrade. The whole new still. character is just terrible. It's just, they just they, you want to talk about shoehorning? They shoehorned a new character in. It was. Man, have you even watched it? He didn't. No. He doesn't, he doesn't even watch know this movies. podcast know exists. He thinks we're on Xbox chat right now just playing a game. <laughs> we <laughs> talked sorry, a lot we about you on my podcast last week, Cody. I know, and I haven't got a uh, chance to listen Weird, to it Weird, shocking. To. Man, oh, I, I didn't to. listen to it yet either. I'm sorry. No, it's Ellie. a good, really good impression. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I so, listen. No, I was, gonna, I was going to listen on my bike ride uh-huh. to work today. And I had a flat uh-huh. tire in the back, so I wasn't oh, able to listen uh-huh. on my way to work. Uh-huh. Don't worry, I'm I don't understand tonight, why having a flat tire listen. would keep you from listening to a podcast. Because my wife doesn't like listening to podcasts. Don't you have Shh, earbuds? Yes. All right. I don't see the issue here. <laughs> well, because well, you're not married. You'll be married, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gatekeeping. <laughs> it's because you're not married. All right, so next week we are not going to be playing a game because we have a special <laughs> guest. Yes! <gasps> no game! I love so not playing Jeff, games. That's why I do it so much on this show. Jeff doesn't have to invert his controls for this. Watch, I'm going to play a game and prepare a review. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next week we are actually going to have the gentleman who does our music and that is stimmage stimmage and i'm excited for this because i found out more about him and it's it's quite exciting that's all i'm gonna say yeah i'm looking forward to it mostly because i don't have to play a game (laughs) on my video game podcast (laughs) we know that jeff likes playing games though just not i do that we force him to play I posted stuff in Discord about me being awesome at auto chess still. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us. If you're listening on iTunes, we ask that you would leave us a five-star review. You can follow us on Twitter at Budget Arcade. From there, you can join our Discord. You can also join our Discord through our show notes. And if you join our Discord, you can also leave commentary about whatever game we're playing that week. Please join Discord. It's fun stuff. And you, you too can, can with, eventually become you, one of our favorites. Yeah, you can no, interact with Coconut no Wizard. No one will ever be my amazing. favorite other than one Wait, it, Coconut Wizard. Wait, is the podcast over? Because I literally have tuned you guys out for like the last, I don't know, 
three or four minutes. Yeah, it seems about I right. I mean, it's over for you. Yeah, you can send long. any hate mail to budget.arcade at gmail.com. Music is by Stimage, and you can download his music at metroidmetal.com. Cody is and... at Butt Biscuits, where you will see absolutely nothing ever. Yep, you got yes. that right. It's just empty space. Just like between his ears. We want to thank uh, you for listening and <laughs> game on. <laughs> so funny, Elliot. <laughs> Get it because you don't have a brain? Yeah, I, I got it, I'm not. I'm going to keep going. All right. Mm-hmm.